Hello everyone, welcome to Faith and Friends. It's Thanksgiving week, the hustle and bustle of the holiday season is here. In one week, Mark will let us have our Christmas decorations on the set. <laughs> As some would say one it's week. the most wonderful time of the year. I think we have a beautiful set right now, the Thanksgiving we do. decoration, the mm -hmm. harvest scene. Oh, yeah. I want to certainly thank Pam Martin for mm -hmm. coordinating all that. She mm -hmm. does a wonderful job with those, and I can't so, wait to see what she's going to do for the Christmas season. She, she, she's been, from what I what understand. What part of the glitter makes you think that's edible? She <laughs> has been at home specially painting over glitter so that it doesn't, like, really? the, so, look, there's probably no glitter on your hand. It's true. Glitter free. Pam, glitter free. Pam is incredible. We are blessed by her. I kind of want to glitter hands, though. No we'll work on that. Maybe we'll have a glitter food segment coming up. Well, today's oh. show has some oh. gift giving suggestions to go along with <laughs> glitter free suggestions, especially if you're looking to spend your money at locations that stand with biblical principles. And we have some recipe ideas as well as that will fit in with your Thanksgiving dinner or perhaps Christmas dinner plans in the coming weeks. Also, did you know that chickens are considered to be great therapy animals? I did not. We'll tell you how one of the shows you watch right here on TV44 is using chickens to deal with issues like isolation, anxiety, and more. Zach, how about that? Chickens. <laughs> I'm, well, now that my wife has got us onto the free range chickens and eating a lot of eggs, I might, I would like to get some chickens, but. Delphus? That's another, chickens. another conversation. <laughs> Our scripture today is 1 Thessalonians 5, and it's verses 14 through 18. And today, in honor of the pilgrims, we are going to read from the Geneva Bible, right. which is the Bible they likely would have studied from during that time. We desire you, brethren, admonish them that are out of order, comfort the feeble-minded, bear with the weak. See that, I'm sorry, be patient towards all men. See that none re recompense evil for evil unto any men, but, uh, but ever follow that which is good, both towards yourselves and towards all men. Rejoice evermore, pray continually. In all things, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus towards you. The will of God is that we would give thanks, give thanks for the many things we've been given. And of course, this is the time we focus on that. But it's with a thankful heart we should operate all year long and recognize that even though we don't deserve anything, God has given us so much. He has. Doesn't it change us when we're thankful? Hmm. It makes us feel better. <laughs> and so, the people around us. Right. It changes the people around. And people can tell if you have a thankful heart, if you have... Um, if you recognize where things are gifted to you from, then people around you will recognize something's different. Something You recognize something that I maybe don't. Yeah. Well, it never hurts to stop and think back to what things were like in the first Thanksgiving. Well, according to whatsinthescripture.com, a first-hand account of the first Thanksgiving was recorded, recorded by Edward Winslow, and this is what he had to say. Many of the Indians coming amongst us, and among the rest their greatest, King Massasat with some ninety men, whom for three days we entertained and feasted, and they went out and killed five deer, which they brought to the plantation and bestowed on our governor and upon the captain and others. And although it be not always so plentiful as it was this time with us, yet by the goodness of God we are so far from what we often wish you partakers of our plenty. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. That, of course, coming from 1 Timothy 4, 4. You know, many cultures have different Thanksgiving seasons and different mm -hmm. Thanksgiving celebrations. And in the Western Hemisphere, we celebrate in October, November, Canada in October, America in November. But it's, it's a worldwide phenomenon that to take time and just to be thankful, mm -hmm. something that really needs to be extended, not just to a couple of weeks in November, but something that we certainly try and help uh, you have that attitude of gratitude throughout mm -hmm. the year at TV44. Absolutely. Of course, many times people take November and they're thankful every single day for something. And how important that is to get into that habit. Um, we live in a world that can point out faults and problems so easily. We seem to have that just bled into our veins. We can pinpoint the issues that we want to fight about. Yet, God, like, like Andy said, thankfulness, a thankful heart, is uh, it's like a medicine that gets around to all kinds of people. Well, inevitably, Thanksgiving causes some people to automatically think about Christmas shopping. Are you thankful on Black Friday? <laughs> well, Black Friday deals happen every year, and every year the stores start their Christmas sales earlier and earlier and earlier. I'm sure you love that, don't you, Mark? No comment. 
<laughs> one website actually has compiled as many Black Friday ads as they possibly can, and you can view them all at one time. So, guys, one oh, location, Just you can stare find at them all, all of the Black Friday yeah, ads. Let me go. So, if you don't do want to watch any of the Black Friday ads, you just don't go to this website. You might miss out on a lot of deals. No. <laughs> You're a big shopper, aren't you, Zach? <laughs> I am not planning on going out on Black Friday, no. <laughs> I've been there before. I've done that once or twice, but uh, I think it's a bit... There's a lot of insanity that goes on out there. So <laughs> I will be at home in my bed sleeping. Well, so, if you yeah. are one who would like to cash in on some of those deals that Zach is not going to get, <laughs> this is the website you can go to. WalletHub.com. Exact email address or exact web address is listed right there on the screen. And we'll also post it on our website, WTLW.com. It's a one stop shop for Black Friday ads. But of course, there's a lot more shopping that goes on in the days after Thanksgiving. And every year we hear from people who are thinking about the word Christmas, they're thinking about the word holiday. How do you know where to shop and what to shop for? Well, there's actually a fantastic new website out there that will help you track down where your area retailers rank when it comes to family-based and faith-based principles. It's faithdrivenconsumer.com, and they rank and categorize businesses on how well they follow biblical principles. They give them a numerical ranking when it comes to faith-based principles. And they have a new app, and I think, Andy, you've already downloaded it to your phone. <laughs> Pulling it up here, the, this wow. new app. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. It, means you can take the information and check on rankings that are on, you know, you know, you pull up a little business and you find your favorite restaurant and see how dedicated they are to principles in the Bible or some places that have uh, things like they're closed on Sunday, like Chick-fil-A and Hobby Lobby. You see the rating system there. You can even chime in and say you've had a good experience or a poor experience at different places. Uh, lots of good, good things there as you're considering where you're going to put those consumer dollars. Seems very easy to use, I think, too, looking at the app. It's pretty straightforward. And so and maybe you are, are not tech savvy out there. It's still a very easy way to get that <clears throat> information. Everything from Chick-fil-A to Tyson's Foods, Walmart, Thrive at Financial, they're all on there. You can learn more by visiting faithdrivenconsumer.com. And those, actually, the ones that we were showing there are the top seven. Yeah. So mm. what do you think are the top seven? Let's bring those back up and take a look at what the top seven organizations are according to this website and they are at the top i'm sure you're probably not surprised chick-fil-a we've definitely heard the faith-based uh, values behind that hobby lobby interstate batteries tyson foods cracker barrel walmart and thrive and financial make the top rankings when it comes to the criteria that this website is looking for there you go all right well the feeling of giving was alive and well last week all across the region during this year's Operation Christmas Child shoebox drop-off, of course, it was taking place nationally. But here's a peek at what happened right here in Lima as you and so many others brought in your filled shoeboxes, filled not just with toys and gifts, but also with your prayers that the saving message of the gospel would be sent all around the world. Next week on Faith and Friends, we will bring you a grand total of the number of boxes collected. All in all, another incredible demonstration of generosity from West Central Ohio as packing box after packing box after packing box was loaded into semi-trucks last week. Well, this week's OIO in the Community segment takes us to Lima Baptist Temple. School kids recently had two days off, not because of a teacher in service or a scheduled holiday or even because of an unscheduled weather delay. Rather, it was a chance for Lima Baptist Temple to serve the community. What ensued was a clothing drive called Share What You Wear. Members of the congregation spent months collecting and giving clothes to the effort that served more than 1,500 people. They also served a free breakfast to folks who arrived early. It's a ministry opportunity that worship pastor Philip Winfield brought to Lima. In previous churches that I've served in for probably the past eight years, we've been able to serve local communities and doing it in this way um, by people in the church supplying clothes out of their own closets for this event. And so we just, for the last three months, have just been collecting clothes in a semi, um, almost completely full. We were able to back it up, empty it all out, um, and this is what we've got. It is a bit overwhelming to see that there are so many people here in need that need clothes like this, that can't afford it. And so it's just a blessing to be able, out of our abundance, to be able to offer them what we have. Um, just trying to serve the community here locally, and they're coming out for us, so we're excited. Well, coming up in just a few minutes, food ideas for your Thanksgiving dinner. 
Mm. Uh, leftovers and Christmas plans. Bring them here. That's, that's leftovers right on that table. We will not turn down food. So if you want to bring us your leftovers or your Thanksgiving dinner, the whole thing, we'll share with you. <laughs> if you want to cook it fresh for us, <laughs> we would enjoy that as well. But at first, if you attended the most recent at Glow meetings, which included the debut of the evening event, then you already know about Gordon Grieve. This Canadian pastor has a passion and a love for the United States and also a passion to encourage God's people to step up and be strong and mighty for him. Jennifer has more from this month's A Glow Meeting. The second Thursday of every month in Lima, dozens gather right here to pray, praise, be encouraged, and challenged. This is Lima A Glow International, the Northwest Ohio gathering that draws people from many area counties. Every month it's a different speaker. And in November, the guest speaker was Pastor Gordon Grieve. Gordon and his wife Judy, but they've been traveling and sharing messages, wisdom, and godly encouragement throughout the United States for many years. Gordon is no stranger to the Lima area. His heart and passion for the people in this region is real, as well as his passion for those in the United States. In America, there is a blockage on many of your minds in the kingdom of God right now these days. You have lived in such excellence and such blessing from the Father that you cannot receive the prophetic word that says a mess is coming. Amen. Your churches are continuing to tell you, well, grace and mercy are always present, and by the way, they are. But when they go on to say it will always be just good for you. That's why when we ministered a few minutes ago and released a strong right hand, of distribution. This is an important word, an important impartation to have. Why? Because the days before you are going to be the most desperate days any of you have ever lived. <laughs> so we must be seeking his presence. The next Aglo meeting is December 10th, and you are welcome to come right here to TV44. It starts at 9 o'clock in the morning, costs only $4 for continental breakfast, a great morning, and there definitely will again be an incredible speaker. Well, with Thanksgiving turkeys, Christmas celebrations, all kinds of things, I bet there's going to be a lot of turkey in your house in the coming weeks. What are you going to do with the bones? Did you know that bone broth is one of the best defenses you can have against wintertime sickness. And I want to let you know how easy it is to make your own bone broth in your own house. So here we are in the TV44 kitchen, but I'm bringing you a few secrets from my own kitchen. You only need a few things to make it possible. First of all, you need some bones. My husband and I collect our bones throughout the year. These are mostly chicken bones. You're going to be using a lot of turkey bones right now, but chicken bones, turkey bones, even that bone from the latest T-bone. Throw them in a bag, and when you've got enough to fill a crock pot, then you can start with your broth. The next thing you need is some vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, and I recommend Bragg's vinegar. I bought this at our nearby Planet Health here in Lima. You also need some water, and you need a crock pot. This is all you have to do. Put your bones in the crock pot. Fill the crock pot full of water, add one quarter cup apple cider vinegar. The vinegar is intended to leach out the minerals from the bones. Fill the entire thing with water, turn the crock pot on. Turn it to low and let it start cooking. It'll go for at least 24 hours, maybe even 36 hours or longer. You're gonna notice the color in the water is going to change to a deeper yellow. You're probably going to sense a little bit of a smell in your house as well. It's a good smell. We'll call it an aroma as you are building up immunity just by making that bone broth. When you're all finished and you've got everything done, take the bones out, pick off some extra meat if you'd like, and then put it in mason jars. You can either can it or you can freeze it. And then when it's time for you to use it, all you have to do is open your jar and you're good to go. It's great for soups, it's great for drinking. All in all, it's a wonderful way to use those turkey bones from all of this month and next month's holiday festivities. All right, now we're gonna throw it over to Mark who's gonna talk a little bit about some chickens. Chickens for therapy? Well, that's what some studies show. It's been said that chickens promote bonding, provide companionship, foster a sense of responsibility, and are great entertainment. 
Those are just a few of the reasons the TV show Coop Dreams, as seen Saturdays here on TV44, has launched a new project called Coops for Troops. It's a fundraiser to provide chickens, a coop, feed and supplies to returning veterans, families of deployed military personnel, military schools, and VA homes. If you'd like to be part of this fundraiser, visit the website on your screen, www.crowdrise.com forward slash Coops for Troops Challenge. Well, moving from chickens to turkey, stuffing, cranberry sauce, and a little pumpkin pie. But if you suffer from a gluten or dairy allergy, where does that leave you when it comes to these well-loved holiday dessert staples? Well, in today's Lost Creek Care Center stop in the kitchen, we're jumping back to Thanksgiving 2014 when Zach taught Jennifer and Andy how to make a gluten-free, dairy-free pumpkin pie. It's a recipe that you might want to make for this year's special meal. One thing that is found at so many Thanksgiving dinner tables is pumpkin pie. But with the increasing number of indiv individuals facing dairy and gluten allergies, pumpkin pie can quickly become a mouth-watering no-no. Today we come to your rescue with a pumpkin pie recipe that is gluten and dairy free. And joining me to do so, our usual <laughs> test <laughs> gerbils. Is that what it is? Test, test gerbils. Now, I, I have to confess that I'm not big into the gluten and dairy free uh, lifestyle yet. Well, I, I don't think Do that. they taste good? Something we share in common is I believe your wife eats the gluten free. She's starting, thing. yeah. She's starting yeah. the gluten free, and so does my wife. And so we can learn something together. We're here bonding, today. Zach. <laughs> <laughs> what we are today, I have one of my wife's recipes right. for the pumpkin pie filling that is dairy and gluten free. But um, also, one of our experts today is Jennifer, who does the pie crust gluten free. So we're going to combine them for a really awesome pumpkin pie recipe. That's right. It is going to be really awesome. It's the first step in your mind. <laughs> does it taste like prepared peach pie? To eat it. It does not. But before not we get pumpkin. there, you know what? You have a job to do. What is it? Very Tell me. important. Do it's called to... rolling out the crust. Now, right. I already went ahead and prepared this crust. And you can see the ingredients on our website, WTLW.com. Um, two cups of gluten free flour, half a cup of palm shortening or coconut oil, one egg, half teaspoon of the salt, two teaspoons of sugar, which is optional. Huh. Before you get to the water, you have to do the first part. You have to get the, uh, the shortening. You can use a, a pastry dough thing. You can use a fork. You're but sharpening your roller? We can talk more about that <laughs> later, because what's important is getting it rolled out. I put the water in, it's all ready to go. And here we have the equivalent of two pie oh, really? crusts. That's two. This okay. is two, so it'd be a top and a bottom or a top or bottom. Now one thing about this being gluten and dairy free is I discovered that it's a little bit um, moister. So the recipe that I used recommended rolling it out in between two pieces of wax paper. Do you want to try this, Zach? Oh, you, so you sure. Put the paper on top? All right. So you're going to put two rolling pins here. You're going to do it with two rolling pins. Now, well, that's interesting. now you can use this special Tupperware uh, mat that I got from Don Brown, who Ooh. is a viewer. Hello, Don. This will give you an idea of how large you want to make. I do it or Zach? We're both going to do it. Why not? Oh, because there's I've another got one. I've two rolling there. pins. One says Grace and one says Abby. Well, I on wonder I if you can roll double quickly. That. So here you go. It's pretty basic. Pretty simple. Yep. How's it going? I'm making you a look wolf. like you've done that once or twice, Andy. Actually, I don't think I've ever done this. Really? Never in my life. You are a natural. Thank you. I was born to roll. Uh, mine's just scooting along. Here. It's not really rolling. Now, up. most times when you're rolling out a crust, I have never actually done it in between this wax paper before. But I like it, it works out pretty well when I tried it. I liked it. Mine's and kind of like an oblong shape. It doesn't really look you circular. You can fix like that. You, what can you crust? do now? Well, Move I mean, I'm just way. making a uniquely shaped pie. Now, yeah, remember, pies guys, have to be a circle, you know? it needs to fit into here. I think that's the definition of a pie. <laughs> All right, Andy, you're getting closer. Well, mine's not going to Let's move it along this way. No, here's your circle. You're trying to, to reach. Oh, that's the point of this thing. I wondered why there was a target underneath. <laughs> All right. I'm just kind of making, like, yeah. pita bread looking. You stuff. know, in the end, I've discovered I've made many, many pie crusts that look very ugly. But as long as they taste good, nobody seems to care. I don't like the crust. I would rather eat the filling and the topping and then... That's going to change how, today. No how thin, how thin you're, do you're we want? You are confident in yourself. The thinner the better. Andy, that's really thick. Oh, I thought we were, that He's was got a nice target. thin one over <laughs> here. He's beating you. He, his might make it Is in this before a race? you. Well, well, we have a filling to make. Zach we was only right have about so his prediction time. that this would take more than a minute or two. <laughs> I'd like to point that out. When you have done it many times, it doesn't take it's very, very long. It's very sticky, though. Look All at that. All right, take look a look. That. Okay, so now take off one of your layers. Okay. See, it's, it's separating. 
Uh, oh, yeah. You may have to use yours and not his. I believe that you can learn this in time. Mine looks awfully interesting. Now, if you weren't using this wax paper, you'd be putting this on yourself. Um, so now you've got to peel off the wax paper. Can we, like, press it in first? To... It's like a fruit roll-up. You can press it in. Now, don't forget, when you get the edges, you have to flute the edges. Ooh, what does that mean? Flute! Flute the edges with a your, jazz flute you're with your to? thumb and your finger so that it ends up looking something similar to this. Hey! Nice job, Zach. Thanks. Mine's All right, I think you guys are timer. interesting starters. But how about if we go ahead and make the ingredients? Well, yeah, do we have time to do the, the right? actual filling? Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> All right, because I've got that covered over here for the gluten and dairy-free pumpkin pie filling. You can see we have a variety it. of ingredients. We'll go through them real quickly, starting with one mashed banana. One cup one of pumpkin, of course. Wait a second. Oh, yes. What are we making? Oh, yes. This is pumpkin pie. One Rock. cup Banana pie Can you hand me that? of pumpkin you see there. Now, this is interesting. Look at the vanilla pudding mix there. And it's very important to note that this is the Jell-O brand pudding mix. Why? Because it's dairy-free with few ingredients uh, that are going to cause, or very few ingredients that are going to cause issues. And so, very important is here. Is there but, normally pudding and pumpkin well, pie? Well, no, but this is going to serve as your thickening, one of your thickening agents. I like um, it. This is one of the differences, but this is the gluten and dairy free we're after. So, continuing with the ingredients, we've got two you eggs we're going to throw violent in. Violent with that, that banana. Half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. Of course, there is sweetened almond milk, but this is half a cup of unsweetened. Yeah, this is in. important for all your dairy allergies out there. A teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of each cloves, and, um, well, cloves right there. So, what we'll get started here, you've already got it going. We've thrown all of those together in the bucket, and it looks like Andy's <laughs> doing do something the with them. Go ahead and do the eggs. Do. Now you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees is what this is going to bake at. Very nice. Keep going. Whoops. Oh, stop. Don't, don't. What? Oh, my goodness. Who, <laughs> shell? Who put the eggshell in? <laughs> The little crunch is just a little extra, an extra That's right. bonus. I really now, if you want to see that. this recipe in its entirety, it is at cinderella.wordpress.com. That's where this recipe comes Cinderella from. Cinderella Cooks? This will also be in the WTLW website, so of course you can get the ingredients there. Find a link there as well. How's it coming, Andy? It looks eggy. It does look a bit eggy there. Jennifer's right. going to put our spices in. This thing's throwing me off. What is this? Oh, I think you're supposed to actually use a real spoon. Probably to mix that it was, up. There. That was just something I brought. I don't even know if you weren't even supposed to use that. That was just me coming up with Is ideas. this even clean? Did you just pull it out of your <laughs> shed? It's like a he, tool. He's the expert, not me. How much was this on this again? What do you have there? The nutmeg? <laughs> Half we were a on teaspoon. The seventh <laughs> teaspoon of nutmeg. Okay. Is that too much? <laughs> it's a very nutmeggy. There, you can see it thickening okay, you up go, there. What did you say again? Cinderella cooks that. WordPress.com. Of course, you can find a link at WTLW.com to get there. I'm not a nutmeg person. I don't like spices or anything that's... You know, you also were not a fruit person. I've always liked fruit. Or a vegetable what person. Kind of person. I'm still not a vegetable person. <laughs> what kind of person would you like define wings yourself and as? Pizza. I'm, I'm with next you there. <laughs> we could do wings. Thanksgiving we wings. We could do wings. We have a couple different recipes for I wings. I did a deep that fried turkey once. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. It was. It was interesting. It was. I was up, up in Alaska. It was 20 degrees below zero outside, and we had the deep fryer out there and had to relight it about seven times. Okay. Is this ready to go in? It doesn't look ready. Well, it'll. It'll. We need to bake it. Okay. Kind of okay. Oh, I can't eat that. <laughs> of <course> we won't. <laughs> okay. Here you go. <laughs> what is this for? Go and put it in our nice. Go ahead and, and pretty, put it in. So there you see, fill one eight-inch pie, pie shell. Uh, of course, we have ours today. You're going to bake that at your 350 degrees for around an hour and 15 minutes, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. You're going to have just take a look. Depends on your oven, of course, as Andy puts that in. But our final result here. What if I have a wood stove? Is our gluten. <laughs> That's going to be a whole other animal entirety. Can I do it over a campfire? This is your gluten and dairy-free <laughs> pumpkin pie. And believe me, this Thanksgiving, it smells really your good. family members with those allergies are going to just jump for joy. They will be so thankful um, because you have prepared something that they can eat. Can I Who cut doesn't it? like desserts? Of Please. course. Can we try it? Of course. I don't think we have any uh, plates here. Who Does that matter? Plates? No. Do we have any utensils? That may matter. Who needs utensils? Uh, you can we start, Andy. <laughs> here we go. Oh, wonderful. gets the absolute pie test. 
How is it? It's good for a pumpkin pie. <laughs> Wonderful. I don't like pumpkin pie. Well, there you have it. All of That's your good. allergy family members are, are going to be able to the eat vanilla pudding. dessert mm. this Thanksgiving. I like that. We have a day for giving thanks. We have two for getting deals. Now we have Giving Tuesday, a day when we come together to give. You can give time, give money, give goods, give your voice. Anyone, anywhere can make a difference. How will you give? Yes, that is a reminder. Giving Tuesday is coming up soon, December the 1st to be exact. And we want to encourage you to take this opportunity to offer a one-time gift to TV44. You may, you may wonder how is a gift used at TV44? What's well, your opportunity to reach out to those who don't have a Christian network around them and be that special community that supports them in their walk with Christ. Your financial contribution allows TV44 to be a church for those that are shut in, who still want to hear the message of the Bible but can't get out of their homes. And your giving creates a link where the next generation, for the next generation, as we reach out to the area youth with their academics, their music, their sports, and most importantly, their relationship with Jesus Christ. The 2016 Continuing Christ's Mission campaign is underway as we plan the 2016 budget. We're grateful for your pledge or your one-time gift as we continue Christ's mission of sharing the gospel into 2016. And already, Jennifer, we've had some folks who have partnered with us. We're certainly appreciative for this uh, donor who is pledging $20 a month for the mm -hmm. 2016 campaign. Uh, this one from Lima, a one-time gift of $50. Thank you so much. How about Mr. and Mrs. Clarence Rose Brock from Hamler? Thank you for your gift. And Kathleen Davis right here in Lima. We so appreciate you investing in the lives here in West Central Ohio. Kathleen Davis, she's always liking the Facebook posts. That oh, nice. That's so great. Thank you so much, Kathleen. We appreciate that. Well, there are five easy and convenient ways to give to TV44. One, you can donate by mail. Two, you can donate in person at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. You can donate over the phone. That would be a third way with your credit card at 419-339-4444. The fourth way, donate online at WTLW.com. Or in the fifth way, you can sign up for monthly automatic withdrawals by emailing contact at WTLW.com. Call us for more information about any of those options. And don't forget, you can rewatch any of these segments, including our food segments, at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. This show and so many others that you see here are part of what you make happen when you're a financial partner with TV44. And one final look at our scripture verse, Andy. 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 through 18, again today, in honor of the pilgrims, reading from the Geneva Bible, which is the Bible they likely would have studied from. We desire you, brethren, admonish them that are out of order. Comfort the feeble-minded, bear with the weak, be patient towards all men, see that none recompense evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both toward yourself and toward all men. Rejoice evermore, pray continually in all things, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus towards you. Praying that you are in the will of God and following his will and, and finding that each and every day as we are thankful for you.